Hello, I'm at the Pima Air and Space Museum in Tucson, Arizona. And uh, this is a little series that I'm doing here on, uh, uh, on YouTube. I have a blog at uh, Microsoft uh, called Subscribe where I talk about technology. And I'm also going to talk about technology here in uh, this little series which I'm going to call Clemens and Pima because I'm a big aviation geek and uh, probably from my time that I spent uh, in Seattle around Boeing. And the first thing I want to talk about today is uh, the area rule. And so I'm standing in front of an uh, um, interceptor. It's the Convair uh, F-102. But before I call out uh, the particular feature that it has, you might uh, notice that it's not exactly straight, if you can see that. Um, I will explain quickly what the area rule is. And I will do that here on the ground. And it's a very sandy place here. And then we're going to take a look at uh, how the area rule manifests on some aircraft. So I'm sitting under the F-102 here. And uh, you can't see that, but uh, I do. And uh, I'm going to talk about the optimal shape of an aircraft and uh, how the area rule affects that and how you can see that reflected um, in uh, these uh, aircraft. I will sh show you as we take a walk around here um, on the museum grounds. So the optimal shape for an aircraft is kind of like this. That's the, this, this shape here um, that you see reflected in many aircraft. And if you take a look at them, um, you kind of have the pointy nose and then you have the pointy tail. And so that's the aerodynamically optimal shape that you can achieve. If we take a look at this, this is the look kind of from the top. If we take a look at how this looks from, from, the, from the front, so the so-called cross section, it's kind of circular. And uh, what you want, or it's kind of oval, but what you want along this shape is you want to have even volume distribution all the way around that shape. So you want to have kind of, if you look at the volume distribution here, you want to have a kind of a curve of um, uh, in this way. So if you now take this structure here and you add wings, so let's go and add wings here, a wing here and a wing there. If the blings were blades, and we're actually going to see an aircraft where the wings are blades and don't add significant volume, here, uh, significant volume. But the wings are not blades, per se, because the wings need to be um, um, thicker. Some, some of them add, uh, act as even as tanks, or in most aircraft, in many aircraft, they add as, act as tanks. But the place where the wings are attached to the fuselage needs to be pretty strong. So it's fairly thick. And as it is thick, it adds to the cross section. We take the, now we take a look at the place where the wings attach from the front cross-section and so the wings go here and you see all this here so like this all that is actual volume which is added to the body of the aircraft so that ends up in a in a more if you look at the, the volume distribution curve it kind of gets it gets pointy so that's the ideal it kind of it's bre it's breaking out so that the volume distribution is not um, ideal, and it turns out that the air and aerodynamics do care about math. So what you need to do is you need to go and compensate for that, which means you need to go and and the, for the for where the wings attach, well you, you need to take the volume that came out of here that I just threw out, and you kind of need to go and add this here somewhere, right, and that turns out makes the fuselage a little bit narrower. Um, and so we, if we take a look at this from the top, it ends up looking like this. So it's no longer this, this shape, but we're actually making it more look like a Coke bottle shape. And that's also what, it's, what it was called these days. So you make the body narrower, so when you attach the wings, you're in these places compensating for that additional volume that's being added here. And so that's the area rule that was discovered. Um, they weren't really looking for it. That was discovered by an engineer named Whitcomb in NACA, the predecessor organization of NASA, 
um, as they were uh, as they were developing these aircraft. So the predecessor of this aircraft, the YF-92, um, that has a had an absolutely straight shape. So it didn't compensate for this, and they just could not. They had the super the strongest engine that they had available, and they just could not make it past Mach one. They could could not make it um, faster than the speed of sound, and then they came up with the 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 uh, test models for these, for the F-102s, and they could go, get those over Mach 1 because they were shaped like this. And so the transonic drag, as it's called, didn't hold the aircraft back, um, even uh, with those strong engines. Uh, later, the engines become, uh, became so strong um, that they could uh, you know, push past this transonic drag uh, uh, much easier. So the Coke bottle shape is not so pronounced, but with many of the machines that are around here, you're going to see that uh, uh, fairly pronounced. So we're going to take a look now at uh, some of those aircraft. So this is the North American F-86 uh, Sabre jet. The Sabre was uh, kind of America's uh, uh, answer to the MiG-15 in the Korean War. Um, so it uh, got most of its fame from there. And it was a subsonic fighter. And you can, you can actually tell that it's a subsonic fighter now, uh, knowing these things, because Check out the shape here. The shape is almost perfectly, um, perfectly uh, aerodynamic, obviously. Um, so it's pointy at the top, even though you know, this is how the, the big air intake, how it, it, it's breathing, and uh, it gets narrower at the end, so it's optimal in terms of aerodynamics. But this design could have not flown supersonic because look at the extra volume that the that the wings add here as they're attached. So they add to the total volume and so now the curve, the distribution curve gets kind of pointy in the middle. So that's a typical subsonic um, jet design. And now we're going to take a look at, uh, at, at another close look at the 102 and then its uh, successor also the 106 and then we're going to look at my one of my favorites for this subject the f5 tiger which has kind of the most pronounced shape and is actually i think the the, the most beautiful looking aircraft that um you know highlights the area room so this is the back of the f102 uh, um, this is the um, engine uh, outlet and you see these bulbous uh, extensions here um, they're actually part of this whole area rule shaping, so I'm going to get out of the way a bit. And so what you see is that over here, the body kind of gets narrower, and that's exactly over the wings, exactly where the wing is attached. So this is how you see kind of the area rule um, uh, manifesting on um, this aircraft, is that if you can take a look at the long the flight, you see this bump into um, the uh, the fuselage of the air aircraft, and that's the implementation of the area rule. And that bomb actually got was all that made all the difference between the 102 and its predecessor, the experimental YF-94. This here um, got uh, this one to uh, Mac uh, across the uh, sound barrier. So here's another look. Really, get, really getting close, so you can see what the that curvature on the F-102 looks like. So uh, this is the F-106. That's the successor, effectively, also an interceptor um, of uh, the F-104. So I just have those uh, uh, the F-102. So I kind of have those two here side by side, and they almost look the same. If you just look at the cockpit, they're hard to distinguish. But you'll see uh, that with the um, F-106, the air intakes are much further back. And there's a, a number of other changes that were made. Um, and uh, so, But they're looking the same. They're both from Convair. Um, so they're one manufacturer. And it's effectively, one is the successor of the other. But you also can see, uh, when you look at the, the 106, here at the, at the air intakes, how the area rule here is even more pronounced and even more dramatic um, because they're kind of set back. So you see how the air intakes and how the wings add to the volume on the fuselage and uh, how it's kind of curved in the back to compensate um, for that. And so now, uh, last, 
the uh, F5, the Northrop F5 uh, Freedom Fighter has this um, really most pronounced here. As you can see, um, that's uh, a very dramatic kind of way of shaping the aircraft in the middle um, with that area rule. So I'm going to take you along specifically on this aircraft. So we're going to take a oops, sorry. We're going to take a little closer look at that curvature and shaping a little closer. You can see that fairly dramatically here. How that Coke bottle shape is there. And actually makes the aircraft obviously very nice to, very easy to look at, very nice to look at. And uh, so that's the impact of nature, the impact of air kind of on uh, the aircraft shape, impact on aerodynamics, and uh, how kind of mother nature is forcing the aircraft, even these aircraft, to look uh, a little bit nicer um, than they otherwise would look. Because they're utility aircraft to seriously you know, kill people.